Welcome to my channel! My name is Frederick Zillen and I'm a running technique specialist. Since I do nothing else all day from morning to evening but meet runners and have done so for many years, I've noticed how many people think when it comes to running technique. Quite often there are misunderstandings about how it all works. And if I hear the same misunderstanding many times from many runners year after year, it can be a good topic for a video. And this one is one of them. Many runners confuse stride length with where they land in relation to their body. Let's start with the riddle. Say that there are two runners called David and Maria. Maria lands here relative to her center of mass and David lands here relative to his center of mass. Who has the longest stride length? Maria, who lands here, or David landing here? Maria, David. Have you decided? Good. And the correct answer is… We don't know because there is not enough information to answer the question. Stride length is a measure of length in centimeters or inches on the ground. Run on a beach or on snow and measure the distance between your footprints. That is your stride length. Where you land in relation to your central mass has nothing to do with that. You can land almost straight on your body and still take very long strides. Like Usain Bolt for example. It is also possible to have a short stride length but still have a clear overstride. If two people run at exactly the same pace and have exactly the same cadence, they will have exactly the same stride length. But they still can land in very different places in relation to their center of mass. Now I'm exaggerating a lot. In these two films I'm running at the same pace, it's 5 minutes per kilometer, that's 8.02 per mile. On the one to the left I land very close under my center of mass. And to the right I land quite far in front of my center of mass. If you always have a longer stride length when you overstride, I should have longer stride length on the film to the right. But this is not the case. There I have a much higher cadence, which means that the stride length in centimeters or inches is shorter than on the film to the left. Now, as I said, this was exaggerated and I didn't keep the same cadence. But that was just to make it more clear. Stride length has nothing to do with where you land in relation to your body, your hip, your center of mass when you run. I have experienced this confusion myself. It is now approaching about 20 years since this happened, but it's still very funny. There was a person who had run 1500 meters in the Swedish national team who would help me with my running technique. I did not have nearly as good running technique or as much knowledge of how it works as I have today. Back then I had too much of an overstride. The runner who was to help me certainly had a much greater knowledge and technique than me, but he was not such a great teacher nor had he understood the difference between overstride and stride length. So instead of saying that I landed too far in front of me, he said that my stride length was too long. Now of course it would not have helped at all if we, he had told me to put down my foot more under me because the place where you land is affected by so many other things that when it is time to put your foot down that place has been decided for a long time. In principle 100% of the runners who come to me know that they should land under their body, their hip, their center of mass. But a powerful majority land too far forward which shows that knowing what to do is not enough. It's how to get your foot to land in the right place by itself without having to try to land under your body. That's the hard part. Well anyway, to get me to stop to overstride, the runner shouted to me repeatedly, 
take shorter steps. Take shorter steps. Shorter steps. As a result, after a while, I took steps about this long, but still insisted on putting my feet in front of me. A bit like this. I took very short steps with a very high cadence, but continued to overstride. Now, this is mostly a funny story, but it wasn't so funny at the time, even though it was an event that made me think even more about how to run and about all how to help others become more energy efficient when they run. Because I was a coach at a track and field club back then. And if there was one thing that I thought about as I ran there with my tiny, tiny short steps, it was that if runners have difficulty with an instruction, it is not the runner's fault. It's the instruction's fault, or rather the instructor. So today's take home message is your stride length is a measurement in length in centimeters or inches and is determined by your cadence and pace. Measure between footprints on a beach or in the snow and you'll see your stride length or just let your fancy GPS watch calculate it for you if you want to know the answer which is a pretty useless knowledge and nothing to care about. Where you put your foot in relation to your center of mass has nothing to do with your stride length. You can land too far in front of you and have a short stride length, just as you can land under your body and have a very long stride length. And that's all for today. Hope you have a nice week with lots of running and I see you again in the next video. I really hope you liked that video and if you did, you please click the like button and maybe also the subscribe button so you don't miss any more videos here on my channel. And if you are interested in my online course, you find all the information about that one in the description below.